Good morning, afternoon, or evening, and welcome to the Bloody Disgusting Network. The following show is just horrifying. Beware. Killer on the loose. Please don't say you want to choke me. Okay. Jeez. Sorry. Uptight. Mm. You like that? I'd love having sex with your corpse. What? And welcome back to Porno Queers. It's our look at sexy shenanigan takeoffs of real films, and I'm Joe. And I'm Trace, and yes, we are discussing Chi-Chi LaRue's Scared Stiff 2, The Amityville Horror. And <laughs> do you have to see Scared Stiff 1? Um, no, I, I didn't, not. and I mostly understood the plot of this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, folks, so we're releasing this to coincide with the 45th anniversary of the original Amityville film, and... I'm being generous if I say that this uh, porno parody is doing a decent job of benchmarking the original actual film, but it does kind of follow a similar vein. Yes, and I will say, um, so I think this is a Naked Sword original, and I was a little um, shocked when I saw the runtime for this movie, which is two hours and 55 minutes, but everyone... There are five sex scenes in this movie that each Mm -hmm. range between 28 and 36 minutes in length. So the actual like dialogue and plotting is maybe, maybe three minutes between sex scenes. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Um, The weird thing that I found about this was that I actually really enjoyed the dialogue slash narrative portions of the film. I mean, your mileage is going to vary depending on how much puns you like and how much stupid humor you like. But I found the sex scenes bad. Um, I did not find them bad. I actually think the best one's the first one. Wow, yeah. And then the couch one, and then the Taylor Rain one, and then the last... <laughs> and then he did her on the boat, and then... <laughs> <laughs> honestly the worst one's the last one and i, I we, we'll talk about that in a minute um but uh yeah I, I, but here's the thing this is a very self-aware porno so we are being yes. very meta about how like, again like we have a character that breaks the fourth wall looks straight at the camera at the audience and says you know oh, a plot and a gay porno what are you expecting and mm. so i appreciate this level of self-awareness um the acting is still well, porno they're... level quality <laughs> exactly <laughs> they might as well be delivering a pizza or in this case an exorcism so it's a thing where i was like oh i think the script is more clever than the acting um but right yeah i mean i i i did have fun watching this although i will confess that for some of these sex scenes i um i did skip through them a bit because oh my the God. <laughs> yeah at, at nearly three hours it's the only way like when i told my husband that we were doing this as always he said you have too much time you and trace need therapy but then he also <laughs> said wait who would actually sit there and watch this like he okay. he very much wanted to make sure that i had skipped through it and i was like oh god yeah no i think i spent about 30 minutes on this i i was thinking about this though because okay so for me personally i obviously i watch porn like, I, 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 sure. I, I i enjoy porn i don't often sit there and watch the scene from beginning to end like you know yeah. basically like when they start making out i'll watch the making out for a bit then i'll skip to when they inevitably like start blowing each other then i'll skip mm-hmm. to when the rim job happens and then i'll watch that yeah. for like you know a little bit and then you know I, I watch like the beginnings of each segment of the sex scene but sure i i'm curious for you or i guess even listeners does anyone out there just actually like watch the porn just sit there and watch yeah I, well because i mean i know some couples you know they, they they watch porn together and my husband and i've done that before but we've also like mm-hmm. even when we've done it before we've just skipped through it because we're you know obviously doing other things while we're watching it yeah but i don't know it's like some people maybe just watch these for actual entertainment and maybe jack off like sporadically like throughout the three enormous three hour runtime. time <laughs> Uh, either that or yeah maybe you're edging uh oh. possibly you've got something on in the background and you're just kind of like yeah sex yeah joe it's but... not edging it's gooning as the kids are saying <laughs> oh, God. okay um but let, let's circle back to this plot because we mm-hmm. did mention that 
the writing is probably better than the performances because these are not professional actors. Like they are paid to look amazingly hot and fuck each other. So the fact that they can deliver dialogue is a bonus. Yes. But we're going to give credit to Jackie Beat, who is the writer of this, uh, does appear in a cameo from an Australian bathroom. I saw I saw that. <laughs> 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 and yeah, you know, we have iconic gay porn director Chichi LaRue, as well as Mr. Pam directing this. And I mean, direction in a porn film is um, I, an you know interesting what, thing. I will say, though, there was some genuine effort put in the non-sex scene parts yes. of this, even in like like filtering and like, like the haunted stuff. Mm -hmm. Some of this felt very scary movie, too, to me. Yes. And so I actually thought, I mean, for a porno, the production value of this was pretty good. I would love to know whose house this was. Oh, yeah. This is a, a big old McMansion. Because, of course, folks, if you know the Amityville story, then you have a general sense of what the plot of Scared Stiff 2 is. But in principle, so let's begin, Trace. Mm -hmm. The first scene involves newlyweds. I've got characters, but they're not really characters. No. So we're just going to call them by their porn names. Yeah. So newlyweds Calvin Banks, as well as Dante Cole, buy a house that we will eventually learn is haunted by a drag queen called Amityville Whore. And they are purchasing this house from real estate agent Josh Moore. And the Amityville Whore, we should note, is played by Chi Chi LaRue in a very brief flashback where we learn that she murdered everyone. Because the house used to be a whore house back mm -hmm. in the... Is the 80s? <laughs> it's uh, the 70s. The 70s. Oh, sorry. No, you are right. It is the 80s. I thought it was the That's It's fine. Um, but basically, she got so mad that no one wanted to fuck her, but wanted to fuck everyone else that she killed everyone, and hence right. the haunting of the Amityville Whorehouse. But the haunting is like sexy dreams, and occasionally you get cum thrown on your face in the middle of the night. Oh, my God. Which is the best sight <laughs> gag in this entire film for It's me. a really good sight gag. I wanted to know, actually, if it was, like, some obvious like, lotion they were throwing on them, or if they just, like, actually, like, all bukkake into some cup no. and just, like, threw it on them. <laughs> it's obviously the first one. This looked like someone had filled a bucket of industrial lube and just thrown it on these two poor actors. It's great. But, yeah, so, nevertheless, um, I... Okay, so, I think Calvin Banks is a very attractive man. Um, sure. Not in this movie because no. he has a man bun for 90% of his screen time. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, I couldn't tell if this was the very 2019 of it all for this. I mean, I told you offline, I've seen nearly all of these performers in other productions. <laughs> and Calvin Banks has done a bunch of work with Cocky Boys, so I've seen mm. him experiment with a variety of different haircuts. I do have to say, I think this is one of the worst. It's not great. Good performer, though. Oh, sure. Cutie patootie. He's got... I, I feel like he and Dante Cole actually understood how to balance the comedy with the absolute stupidity of this. Yes. So even though, again, they're not professional actors, they know how to sell the jokey hamminess of it so that even the dumb stuff goes down a little smoother. Absolutely. And then this is where we get our only like kind of reference slash flashback to Scared Stiff 1, which starred Colby Keller. And oh, I, mm. yeah, right now. Problematic. We don't need to talk about him. <laughs> I, I guess Calvin Banks, though, because uh, it was called it was a, it was a summer camp set piece uh, mm. and it was called Camp Camelot. And when I was writing this in my notes, <laughs> my phone corrected Camelot to come shot, which um, <laughs> appropriate, which really made me think about how often I text the word come shot to people. <laughs> Interesting. We're learning a lot about you right now, aren't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But nevertheless, so Josh Moore sells in this house and he's like, uh, they don't seem to mind that it's haunted. And uh, I did love this bit of detail because Josh Moore's real estate agent takes a commission based on the length of their dick. So he takes a nine and a half percent commission from the sale. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> There's some other funny elements in this right so mm -hmm. we learned that they have to pay him in inches and commission because they don't have a ton of money so they actually fuck him to get the house because they have spent too much on their lavish wedding because they are newlyweds which is very similar to what 
the actual Amityville plot is. It's like, oh, right. We're financially poor, so we need to move into this. Ooh, why is this house so cheap sale? But um, <laughs> I did love the detail that they had this lavish wedding, Calvin Banks and Dante Cole did, with custom tuxedos by Donatella Versace and paleo-friendly menu that was made by Wolfgang Puck. This, again, just this is just Stupid. satire off the walls. Like I, I, It also feels like very like pointed at like LA gay culture, right? <laughs> a little bit, yeah. <laughs> A little vacuous, uh, a little hoity-toity. Mm. Very much so. Um, but yeah, the sex scene itself, this is my favorite sex scene in the movie. I okay. like I like that more who is, because I mean, basically Calvin Banks is like the main bottom in this scene. I think he's actually, right. I think he's the only bottom I think in this he scene. Is, Cole, Cole yeah. will bottom at some point in the future. But um, I like that more gets rimmed because I feel like in so many porn scenes I watch, it's always the bottom getting rimmed and then the top right. getting blown. But like, I, I always appreciate seeing a top get rimmed. Oh, see, that's interesting because I do feel like I've seen a fair number of tops get rimmed, but it's partially because, like, you know, they're not going to do anything butt stuff related. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I mean, I've seen it happen. I just feel like I don't see it more often than not. Oh my god, that's like a double negative. But you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I see tops not getting rimmed more often than not. Right. I mean, the other interesting thing is that all three of these performers are versatile. I've seen them all in various positions. Mm -hmm. I feel like I've actually seen Josh Moore in bottom positions more than I've seen him in top. So maybe that's appropriate. Josh Moore was a new discovery for me, and he is coming oh. in my... Uh notebook of porn stars to look google <laughs> oh my God. the idea that you might actually have a notebook with porn stars in it is i don't hilarious actually, well because okay here's i'm actually really i think i said this before on these porn crazy i'm really bad at remembering porn stars so like honestly the only ones i really remember are like the single name ones from sites like cocky boys you know uh, okay like daniel and tanner and i'm like i don't know <laughs> um <laughs> <laughs> also you're naming people from sean cody not cocky boys, oh shit that okay. oh my oh oh sean, uh, uh, cocky boys oh jake bass Jake Bass, any from Cocky Boys? Oh my God! And you're skewing younger, of course. I you always are. skew younger. Well, because the only person in here that I was like, okay, I know, I know this one off the top of my head is Taylor Rain. Um, right. Well, why don't we talk about his scene because that's the second one when we flash back to 1985, and yes, he plays a sex worker whose character name is Surfer Boy. So cute. <laughs> I, I love the uh, the set design for this that set. Actually, it's a very red bedroom. Yes. He is with Cade Maddox, who is married. <laughs> sure. Uh, I, I did love this, though, you know, because he's like, oh, I, Taylor Rain goes to him. You know what's better than a little companionship? A big mm -hmm. cock. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think at one point he says, speaking of members, how about you suck on mine like the cock hungry closet case that you are? Which, again, like Taylor Rain was being so aggressive here that I fully expected him to be the top. And then he is the bottom for this, which mm -hmm. but which I feel like that's par for the course for Taylor Rain. But um, well, yeah, I gotta say, though, um, Cade Maddox gets so sweaty in this scene that oh, I boy. found it yeah. distracting. <laughs> <laughs> yes was the air conditioning broken or is he just a really enthusiastic performer little column a little column b i don't like I, I have to imagine these rooms get like steam filled by like all the sex that's happening but i mean i'll confess i'm somebody who like i go really flushed when i get physically exerted to the point that once when i played beach volleyball people thought that i had a third degree sunburn and i was just like no i've overexerted myself so maybe it's that situation where Cade Maddox is just a sweater. Yeah, he very much could be. I just, again, Pete, me personally, I found it distracting. But nevertheless, this scene, so yeah, it's this flashback to 85. And I was trying to figure out narratively why it was relevant until we then cut back to the present. Because basically, mm -hmm. I did like this. So they, they both finish. And then Taylor Rain's like, well, I can come again. And Cade Maddox is like, me too. So they both just come again. But mm -hmm. when they come, that's when we flash back to the present. And Dante Cole and Calvin Banks get coated in um quote unquote demon semen <laughs> <laughs> yes. and folks as we previously mentioned it is not just a little you know moisture across no. the face it looks like someone hosed them down and it is it, it's comically funny because it is so obviously not 
outcome. So I just thought it was very gleeful. That's the thing for me, though. I was like, okay, because it, it's supposed to be funny and it very much is. But then they start getting on, you know, Scruff and Yelp to like, look for an exorcism slash look for a, a guy to hook up with. And mm-hmm. they are so coded in this fake jizz that I was like, <laughs> yes. I just please go wipe this off. Please go. Like, oh, uh, look, you are being triggered because you hate the sticky. Yes. I, and look, I love a good facial. I love being in the middle of a bukkake. Not that I've been in the middle of a lot, but I have. Wow. And, but, but, but this, it, did, it, it, it didn't no, look good. It doesn't work for you when it gets <laughs> it to this, right? It's not my kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody get these boys a towel, please. <laughs> and then we get some more like fourth wall breaking shit, you know, where they, they kind of say some joke. And then Calvin Banks just looks at the audience and goes, really? Jesus Christ, who wrote this shit? Well, yeah, because he says uh, that they're looking on Scruff to find a man to take care of our souls and our holes. And then we get a record scratch. He looks at the camera and says, Jesus Christ, who wrote this shit? And then that's when we get the cameo of jackie beat yes who just i did i fucking wrote it i thought this is very funny (laughs) yeah it's it's all very stupid and very silly i did like the moment too where they wake up and they're yes they're covered in cum and they talk about oh this feels like a premonition and i think it's (gasps) calvin banks who says i don't know what that is so dante cole goes oh it's like pre-cum but in your your brain brain. (laughs) (laughs) i did write that down (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> like, this is the kind of stuff where it's very silly. It obviously is self aware. And I like that it can be hot in the sex scenes, but it knows it's not hot when we're just forcing these porn actors to try to deliver a straight face performance. Better to amp up the comedy and the camp and just let everybody have a good time. Well, it's so campy. And this one absolutely carry over into our next scene when they bring over priest slash exorcist played by adam ramsey i did recognize this one i did know this name oh i love adam ramsey i do love adam ramsey he is a very hot um he needed to get out of this priest garb more faster faster more i think he still wears the robe for a good chunk of this (laughs) he does but what i appreciated is that he doesn't wear any underwear so yeah you know they basically just like rip open the bottom part of it and it's just dick out so okay they invite him over they're all sitting on the couch together which by the way my my ass sweats and so like sitting <laughs> on a leather couch like i can't oh it's a big no no i cannot do it so watching these three men just fuck on this couch i was like mm-hmm. oh god like please it's not practical put a towel go- down yeah i and every <laughs> time somebody talks about putting a towel down for sex i always always go back to crazy ex-girlfriend period sex period (laughs) sex put a towel down because it's period sex whereas for us gays it's like watch out for poop you never know sure yeah I mean do you want to ruin your expensive furniture no put down a $12 target towel I guess maybe that's the idea if it's leather because then you can easily just wipe it off oh nevertheless you're wiping shit off your leather couch no i mean but it, it didn't look like a very expensive leather couch it looked like a cheap wow. leather couch <laughs> this is this is our rental property sir this was loaned to us by a gay older gentleman with disposable income who wanted to see his house featured in a porno yes um so they want to venmo this priest the, the 500 dollars for the exorcism which i love mm-hmm. so we learned that his venmo username is donkey dong 69 because yep the first excuse he gives, okay, I really like Donkey Kong, but that was taken. And mm-hmm. 69 was the year of the Stonewall riots. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Because he's a history buff. <laughs> and then, of course, actually, I really enjoyed Adam Ramsey's comedic delivery because he knew to give a beat. And then he goes right into the line. Just kidding. I have a huge donkey dong and I love to 69. Yes. OK, so I I because he does a monologue to do the exorcism, which we will eventually learn is fake. But again, I'm, I'm a sucker for a rhyme. So this is what um, Adam Ramsey says before it's we start. This. Basically a dirty limerick. It's so good. <laughs> Almighty Father, remove this hex. It's been many years since I swore off sex. With the Lord in heaven and Satan down south, I'd like to put what God blessed me with in another man's mouth. From morning prayers to midnight mass, which of these sinners would like my dick in his ass? I shall remove the spirit of the Amityville whore, and I will fuck you both good for 500 more. (laughs) <laughs> i was gonna say one of those lines has a few too many words in it and it doesn't quite it's, work it's it's the god bless me with it. it's that it's that bit yeah it's um yeah. but nevertheless i thought this was very fun very clever um i i did like this sex scene though i mean because sure. we're also like this is a good threesome we're also because we're fucking both uh dante and calvin 
Right, yeah. When I said off the top that I don't think the sex is good, I probably should have clarified. I find the sex very familiar and very yeah. formulaic. So as you said, you know, it's very much, okay, we're going to do maybe a little bit of making out and then it's going to be blowjobs, maybe a little bit yeah. of rimming and then fucking in two to three positions. And we've talked about this on Porno Queers before. Mm-hmm. It's a standard industry format. So I wasn't surprised by that. But because the house is so nondescript in a yeah. lot of ways, like we're fucking on the couch, we're fucking on the bed. I was hoping for something a little bit varied or different. Yeah, well, again, like, yes, they, they feel stretched to 35 minutes. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Let's get to it. Let's get to the good stuff. Yeah, yeah I mean, you know, we do two or three different positions, but I mean, I, I think, oh, God, like the, the most varied positions or maybe the most like, oh, it's kind of like, oh, that's an interesting, like, like turning my head trying to get it is maybe the Taylor Rain one because I feel like we throw him around a lot, but... Yeah, he he seems a little bit more limber, maybe as though he had a gymnastics background or something. Oh, that wouldn't surprise me, actually. I mean, you see some of these bottoms on some of these porn sites, and they're able to do the splits while taking a dick. And it's just, I mean, I don't know if it's pleasurable or if it's just meant to look interesting for us as the viewer. But yeah, if I've got to crank my head... I'm more worried you're going to break your dick and end up in the ER. Yeah, there's a hundred. I, I don't. I, I don't think it can be. Well, maybe it is pleasurable because if you're if you're used to doing the splits, then I, maybe maybe I don't know. Maybe it unlocks something in your like prostate area. <gasps> Jesus, I'm just thinking of the Thanksgiving short kill where the girl gets a bail with the knife. Oh like, my God, is that a no. dick or is that a knife? <laughs> so we do this exorcism, as they call it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I absolutely laughed at that. Uh, yeah. Uh, again, we have the trademark line. This house is clean, which then again, th- this is the scary movie too, like ghost sound where it's like, uh, yeah, I can't, I can't do it obviously, but it's like the ghost just screams and will now become a prominent auditory presence throughout the rest of the film. <laughs> It's true. Yes, the demon gets a voice. And it is amusing because we move into our fourth scene, which is where we bring in Ghostbusters. So really, you know, like a lot of parodies, we're bouncing around in terms of what we're evoking. So Poltergeist, Amityville, and now Ghostbusters. So we bring in Drew Dixon as Shane, as well as Colby Tucker as Scooby. And they are straight acting who wear what like mechanic overall uniforms with the like ghost <laughs> zipper goggles. down to their abdomen yeah although i okay i i heard i heard scooby colby tucker call drew dixon shaggy when they get to the attic although maybe that was just like a joke they have with each other oh, maybe i am using the listings off of imdb folks uh... so that's where the character names came from because yes you can look up adult videos on imdb I had no idea, by the way. Um, but okay, so this is when also the plot kind of starts to become a lot more non important oh, in the film. Not important. We have lost it. We have completely lost it by this point. Which granted, there's only only 55 minutes left in the movie at this point. <laughs> I hate it when you say that. <laughs> uh, no, so so they come in and you know, they're talking to Dante and Calvin, and the, and they're like, okay, well, we're gonna go look in the attic. I thought we were gonna get a, a foursome scene, and we. Mm-hmm. I was a little disappointed that we don't. So Drew and Colby go upstairs. After being told, like, oh, you know, like, like the ghost brings out your most innate, like, homosexual desires. And they're like, well, right. I'm straight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they, they both got, you know, oh, I'm straight except for that exactly yeah. I had to suck to get this show because it's meant to be a paranormal activity kind of thing yeah. where we're videotaping it. And then the other one says, oh, well, me too, except for that time when I was in a fraternity. You know, and I, I'm going to tell you right now, with, with uh, Josh Moore and... Drew Dixon, I think I have very much learned that British guys really do it for me. I don't think I've ever been with a British guy sexually, and I'm oh. really sad. Interesting. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, obviously, it's a sexy accent. As soon as you leave North America, all of a sudden people get hotter because they speak a little differently. By all means, British men, Australian men, come my mm-hmm. way. <laughs> <I> n- <laughs> so they go upstairs and they're making whatever small talk and then we get the ghost suck his fucking cock (laughs) (laughs) i did like it yeah because it's in the background and they're not quite acknowledging or hearing it so they're having a conversation i will say this attic set is probably the most visually interesting because you know we've got mannequin bus it basically looks like we took everything from a regular movie production and just threw it onto one set or spirit halloween 
Yeah, it, that too. <laughs> but at least there's some interesting things to look at. So they're talking about how they're going to go about this, whatever. And yeah, we've got this demon voice being like, suck his cock, <laughs> suck his cock. And they're not paying attention to it. And at one point it just goes, suck his fucking cock. <laughs> and they are like overacting, like more so than usual they're porn actors. They're really like, not good. These two are not good actors. <laughs> they are not. And I will say though, I do think this is the most basic sex scene in the film. Oh yeah, yeah. I was really excited because I think Drew Dixon is really hot. Um, oh, and he is. Mm -hmm. I was just kind of like, oh yeah, this. We're really going through the motions with this one. <laughs> it's true, and it is kind of disappointing. So Drew Dixon is also a favorite of mine. He often is the bottom, so oh. it's a little bit weird that he is topping in the scene. You can actually find still images with them switch positions. So I think that there's either deleted scenes or maybe we just shot a photo but then didn't actually film it, question marks. Huh. Um, I'm used to him being a filthy motherfucker. Like, he is dirty. And he is vanilla in this scene. Like, like he's dirty, like, in his language, in his actions, all of the Yeah, above. like, he, he takes on a often a little bit more kind of risque scenes with mm. some of the people that he works with. So he does a lot of, like, men at work stuff where we're doing, ooh, I'm the boss, and then you rip open the slit of my pants right. and fuck me hard against the photocopier. Mm -hmm. But yeah, he often has a really, like, filthy, vulgar, like, moany demeanor and i feel like because he's not bottoming in the scene he doesn't get to do as much as he normally does i do wonder and i i do wonder if that's also a conscious choice by chichi larue like hey stick to the mm. script drew <laughs> yeah <laughs> i don't want to hear unnecessary moaning coming out of your mouth i just want to hear the usual porn dialogue fuck me Fuck me. Oh. Fuck me. Okay, so this scene and the last sex scene has the most basic dialogue. Like, nothing inspired about it at all. <laughs> yeah, I mean, before we go up to the attic, we mm -hmm. do the death becomes her joke of now a warning. And I did enjoy now that. Warning, I think that yeah. they gave a good reaction. But that was the only comedic bit that works. Do you remember if they looked at the camera when they did that? They did. Okay, yes. Okay, so th they knew if you, if you were watching that... <laughs> You're probably gay and you knew Death Becomes Her. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But yeah. Overall, this is very fine, but it's not particularly memorable apart from the set design. And then they finish and they get spooked. So they just run out of the house. And then we go into this fifth and final scene and Trace, it is agonizing. It's really long. So uh, I really like Link Parker, who is unfortunately, oh, okay. the, I, I don't know who he is. This is my first introduction to him, but I really like oh, him. Okay. Um, I, again, I'm also a sucker for a Southern accent. Hmm. But, uh, okay, so we are introduced to this gardener, played by Brock Banks, um, as Drew and Colby run away. And they're like, you know, whatever you do, don't go in the house unless you want to have mind-blowing sex with a gay ghost, um, mm -hmm. which made me laugh. So Brock is, you know, gardening or raking or whatever. And he looks <clears> up and there's Link Parker in a pig mask on the balcony. And yes. they, he goes inside. They meet on the sex. But they, oh, my God, they meet on the sex. They meet on the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> now I got to keep it in because it's funny. I know. But no, so so Link, as Jody the pig, we learn his name is. Mm -hmm. He goes, you ain't Jew. Oh, I can't, I'm going to do the accent, but in a southern accent, southern drawl. You ain't Jewish, are you? Because you're about to eat some pork. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That that's probably the last decent line in this but also a bit ew. <laughs> it's I, I I was a little cringe. We, the punchline said it for me, but when he first asked it, I was like, "Why? Why are we? Why are we?" Yeah, let's him? not and say we did. <laughs> uh, so yeah, they do the sex scene on the stairs, and it's on the stairs. I do think it's kind of because we get some cool overhead shots here, but it's also yeah. very limiting to them. Oh, yeah, because we never leave the stairs. So it's no. basically a landing in between the first and second floor. And there's not a lot of room for them to do. I have seen people have sex on stairs before. Sometimes we use the banister. Sometimes, as I said, we get a little gymnastics. We'll stick a leg up there so that we can do different angles. And I, you're right. I appreciated the overhead shot. But these two don't interact much. Yeah. And we haven't met either of them in a previous scene before, whereas all the other performers, like, there was some kind of connection to the storyline. Well, so yeah. it didn't feel like, and now two people are going to have sex. So this felt very 
And now a sex scene. Yeah, the fact that this is the last one and that we don't bring in either Dante or Calvin back at some point for a sex yes. scene, I was a li- again just just like, just like normal like my movie critique like that. This doesn't make any sense. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, there was this opportunity to have this turn it like even typically with these sorts of movies you might end with a big orgy so you know have a bunch of the guys here you know start on the stairs with the two of them and then bring in other people or move the action to somewhere else like i assume this house had a pool we're not using the pool Mm -hmm. okay but the other issue that i had with this my husband begged me not to say this oh no what is it um you're right that link parker has a very sexy voice but he is also the loosest of the bottoms that we see on screen (laughs) and i did not enjoy being able to see up his entire anal cavity you know because it is kind of gross okay so that makes me think maybe he's a like maybe he does fisting scenes a lot maybe which in that case put that in this movie well really because the vanilla sex throughout most of this is quite dull like we're not using toys yeah we're not fisting there's no felching there's no uh urine play pee play or whatever oh, like yeah i think that they thought that the scene was a little exciting because it's edging into pop play with the mask mm. and he does wear the mask for most of the scene yeah. but also it's a non-starter it's just like oh cool you're wearing a mask actually that's a good point well he's also wearing like a harness which i guess is supposed to be like oh look he's real uh bdsm here Mm -hmm. because i guess the kinkiest thing we get in the entire movie it's in the taylor rain sex scene when kane maddox i want he he either (laughs) licks the cum off of his asshole or sucks it out of his asshole and then Ah. spits it into taylor rain's mouth Oh, I think I missed that. I thought that he was just spitting a bunch. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Because he basically like comes up from like licking his ass, but I couldn't tell if he was just licking the cum off his ass or if he like... Uh, yeah. Okay, so it, admittedly, I'm not a big fan when bottoms like push cum out of their ass. Like, I, I just... It's no. not something... It's not for me. Like, again, I love cum. I love cum play. I don't like post-anal cum play, if that makes any sense. Uh, not my kink. Not my kink. Once we've shot, we're done. Well, Call once, it a day. Once it's entered the butt, it's done for me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like, by all means, lick it off me, spit it on my face then. But, like, once it's in the ass, it, it's in the ass. But, yeah. <laughs> You're like, it's done. It's uh... it's not my kink. I get that people like it. It's not for me. But but that was right. the one thing in this movie. I was like, oh, like, that's that's something that's not vanilla. But, yeah, this movie seems to think that pig mask and black harness. Uh, honestly, what they should have done, too. It's talking about the splits. Hmm. So you have Link Parker do the splits on the railing, you know, one mm. leg on each side of the railing. And then you have oh. Brock Banks, like, be two steps up and, like, fuck him there. My like, God. I- I'm trying to envision how this would even be possible because it's, it's like a spiral <laughs> staircase, too. So it's like it, there's not really a lot of angles to play with. I was going to say, this isn't the parallel bar, sir. No, no. It's probably actually very dangerous, which is maybe why they didn't do it. But it would have been visually interesting. <laughs> Yeah, th- this just felt overall, I'm going to say the sex in general for this film is pretty darn vanilla. And for 2019, that did surprise me. Yeah. So I appreciated that we were making efforts at comedy, you know, even after this super long, not particularly exciting sex scene is done. We do have this coda, which is amusing, which is everybody from the film is now just hanging out a year later eating breakfast in the kitchen which again would have been an opportunity for an orgy right i mean i don't want a six scene in this because it's already three fucking well, hours long but maybe get rid of the fifth scene make this mm-hmm. the fifth scene yeah like like the ghost guys you know uh drew dixon and colby tucker like you know they have them run away there's no gardener outside and then like mm-hmm. you know dante and calvin are like oh like what are we gonna do now cut forward mm-hmm. a year later if you can't beat them join them and then they're all just like fucking in an orgy you know yeah yeah because even the i mean i'm not expecting a huge narrative resolution for this film because okay. again it's a porno parody it's not an actual film but joe no 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 no, no. The, the staircase sex scene ended and there were like two minutes left in the runtime and i was like how are we gonna wrap this up exactly <laughs> yeah it, and you know i'm never surprised when we just end a porn scene or a yeah. movie because hypothetically the audience has done what they came to see and or do But at this point, you know, we're watching this as a parody and it definitely feels like, oh, I guess we're done. Hey, does anybody have an ending? We really didn't plan this out. Right, right. Uh, So I I actually wonder, too, if maybe it's like they arrange the performers and like the scenes and then write the script around it. Or 
Right. Who's available on these days. But even I'll confess that this scene to me just feels like we needed to tack on another scene or we already paid these dudes or something because it just it doesn't feel like it goes at all. It has a different energy. It doesn't have any of the same kind of jokes. There's yeah. very little dialogue. I just don't understand why the fifth scene is here. Yeah, it's because, yeah, yeah, you're right. There's no jokes in it because once they finish having sex, um, Link Parker just disappears because, oh, the mm-hmm. reveal is he was fucking a ghost, you know? And it's right. like, womp womp. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's just say that the end of this film gave me blue balls. It, Yeah, yeah, very much so. Um, but you know what? It's fine. Maybe, maybe we can look for, does Scared Stiff 3 exist? Maybe maybe, the, maybe this didn't get, uh, let's see. No, it does not. It does not. We only have Scared <laughs> Stiff 1 and 2. Well, you know, Apparently 2 was enough. Yeah, we'll have to go see uh, Star- Scared Stiff 1, which is the summer camp one at some point. Jesus. I just love the idea of James Brolin and, you know, the ghost of Marco Kidder, mm-hmm. uh, celebrating the 45th anniversary of the Amityville Horror by listening to this trash. Uh, yep. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what he, he's like. You know, I've seen the Amityville Horror too many times. So the Amityville Horror, though. Yeah. All right. What could that be about? Uh, but yeah, that is Scared Stiff 2, the Amityville Horror, everyone. Uh, if you watch it, let us know what you thought. Or if you didn't watch it, let us know if we painted a vivid <laughs> picture of what happened. <laughs> right. Or if you have any British or Australian porn stars that Trace should follow. Oh, yes, please do that. Um, also, open to other accents as well, clearly. Um, okay. <laughs> but until next time, whenever we do one of these again, we can mm. cross out Scared Stiff 2, the Amityville Horror. Indeed, and cross out porno queers. Mm. Good time? Yeah, why? Well, you seem to be looking around the room a lot, and I've quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>